And I can kind of tell he's an engineer because his modeling is fucking good. <laughs> his modeling is super amazing, but I do have some thoughts. So as you can see, his modeling is super crazy, super highly technical sort of stuff. I don't really have too much like thoughts about his actual modeling. Um, I think the main thing we need to talk about is his presentation and stuff though. But it, his modeling stuff is very cool, right? The main thing I kind of want to talk about is, so I know, for example, like before I was talking about how the model portfolio is not good enough anymore. I think this might be like the rare exception where I say you don't need to have texturing is if your modeling is like this good, then I don't know if you actually need texturing. But I don't think many people can hit like this sort of quality of modeling, right? So I think this is what he's... This person is the person that kind of breaks the rule where modeling folio is not going to be good enough. But I think most people can't, won't get modeling to this sort of level, right? This stuff is super cool. Yeah, they say they're an engineer currently, and I'm not surprised. Like you can, you can tell just based on the, the eye of complexity, right? As far as like the actual work goes, I don't really have anything to comment on like the modeling side. I think it's all pretty good actually. There's one thing, I, there's something I would comment on though, if we were going to talk about something, right? Yeah, that, nice, the Chappie model is really good. What I personally would do, right, is everything is kind of the same density here, which is all cool. Like I like this sort of density, but the shoulder pads for some reason are a lower density. And he has a lot of like self-terminating, like redirecting of edges, which I'm not super fond of all this like redirecting but i if i was to do this personally like i'm not saying this is like bad or anything like that or this is wrong or anything but if i was to personally model this myself i would probably have the shoulder pad at like this density of this and that way you would just have more edges to flow this way and you won't have to do so many redirecting edges you can just have like a higher density and these um the bolts are more limited to just their little area they don't have to worry about all this sort of stuff, right? Yeah, the main thing I think he's kind of missing is just his presentation, right? Like the models are super good. What makes his modeling stand out over the rest? It's just like, it's just the attention to detail, like the, it's just how complex everything is. Everything just fits so perfectly. There are some areas like this where I'm, I'm a bit not sure about so he has a lot of like redirecting and self-terminating sort of stuff, which I don't think is necessarily bad. But I think as I've started to like all this sort of stuff here, but I, I feel like for me, as I've started to kind of change my thoughts on modeling, I usually would just have a denser mesh and have less redirecting. So like all this stuff technically works, right? But for me personally, I would probably just rather have more edge loops running through the mesh and you wouldn't have to have so much self-termination. But I don't necessarily think this is bad, right? But why does this stand out? I just don't think most students, I mean, he's not a student. Well, he's, he's a professional in engineering, but I just don't think most people have like this level of complexity to their meshes. And I, it's hard to kind of expect it, right? Like the fact that I, I saw this and he told me, like he said in his write-up that he was an engineer and I'm like, I'm not surprised in the slightest. Like this is all like super technical. The only thing I, I wish with this chappy robot is I wish he had, okay, first I don't like this. I don't see a point of having this. You might as well just leave it as the bust, but I would rather he just goes back and finishes Chappy. I think he can get a job with one portfolio piece if he just took the Chappy and finished Chappy. Since textures are not used, you can sell all the details. You can see all the details of the model. Yeah, exactly. I think this is kind of the main thing. The only thing I would say, which would be missing on like this sort of thing, which could push it to the next level is to add the very subtle like edge breakup, right? Like the very subtle nudging of edges and vertexes on the edges and stuff like that. I think that's the only thing that would make this model a bit better is breaking the CG look by very slightly adjusting like the, the corners and the edges and stuff, just so it's not so perfect, right? But yeah, as soon as I saw this, I was like, yeah, I. I would probably hire this person. Having a mannequin next to it would show its human sale scale, but I don't think there's a point of, there's no necessary need to show that, right? Everyone knows how big Chappie is. And, and I don't think showing the scale of Chappie would actually matter. It, it, 
the only time you need to show like scale is say for example you have like a, a spaceship or something you want to show the scale of the vehicle compared to a person but everyone knows the humanoid robot is just a humanoid robot right so i just i just don't really understand what this achieves or what the point of this is but yeah if i if i was him what i would do is i would finish chappy 100 percent if you can just finish Chappie to the to the same level as the top, you can get a job, I feel. Uh, you don't even need to texture it. I mean, if you can texture it as well, like, so all right, if you can texture this, that's like extra bonus points. But I feel like this model is probably good enough to get a job. It's just the attention to detail on this is so high. Like dealing with all the complex forms, they're all very good. Like he's modeled it. And this is kind of what I was talking about with, um, the last folder I reviewed was the mesh was so low poly, you just couldn't add any of these nice little subtle details into the model because the mesh itself was carried by the subdivision, right? But when the density of the mesh itself is this high res, it means you can actually go in and add these nice subtle details and edge breakups, right? But yeah, this is all very good. Everything is quads, flows very nicely. But yeah, I just feel the only thing that's kind of missing would just be breaking the CG look by just having very slightly um, adjust, you know, the, the vertexes on the corners and stuff like that. I think this is cool. I, I don't know. I don't even know what this is. Well, it's a, it's a pistol. I didn't even realize. But yeah, same thing. I think the asset is very good. There's nothing really to, to comment on this as far as like the model itself goes. It's got all these really nice forms and stuff like that. For me, mostly, it's just mostly presentation, I feel, which is kind of lacking with this stuff, right? Like there's no, I, I personally wouldn't show wireframes in like the viewport, especially like, you know, something like this, you have like part of the images cut off. And then for some reason you can see part of the, my interface. Like, I don't really see why you should do that, but the work itself is really, really good. But yeah, I think it just needs to work in presentation. Just simply that's it. Damn, he's even got all this stuff molded in. Holy shit. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think this is what's kind of making what this person's portfolio stand out. It's just like the attention to detail, just like everything is modeled in, right? And if you're a texture artist and you get a model that's this detailed, it just makes the texture artist's life like so much easier because they can just do everything. They can just push the quality themselves. They don't need to carry the model, right? So this is essentially the reverse of what the last portfolio we reviewed was. This one's... The other one was like the texture was trying to carry the model where this one and everything is in the model and it just makes the texture artist position so much easier to do because they have all the detail already in themselves, right? Damn, all right, they've even got this modeled in. Oof, okay. I think, I think this rivets, a, I think this is a bit too high res. I think you could have done this with way less topology. Yeah, I think this is, the, I think this is the only thing I would be like, okay, that's settle down. That's a bit too dense. <laughs> like I, I think just these, uh, just these two screws here are a bit too, a bit too intense. Everything else I think is very good though. It's just, yeah, like the content, the, the consistency of the density, I, I think is very nice. It's just, yeah, it's just these rivets are just so dense and I don't really understand why the rivets are so dense. He's screwed up there. Ha ha ha. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll say this. My only concern about someone like this going into the VFX industry is very rarely do we get the time to do this level of detail on a model. It's usually based around being as fast as we can to get the workout right. So my only concern with someone like this going into the industry is they might come in to the studio with the mindset of I'm gonna model every single thing perfectly and we just might not simply have the time to. Like you sometimes see people coming into the industry and like, Say we have like a huge robot to build, but then they focus on just one thing and make one thing super perfect. And it's like, well, you've used all the bid days up on the hand when the rest of the robot's not done yet. That's my only concern with um, someone that's used to doing such a high level of detail is they might have a bit of a slap in the face when they come to the industry and realize they just don't have the time to do this complexity. The only time it, it might be like that is if you're doing something like Chappie. Chappie, I think, is the one exception where you would have this sort of time. But yeah, I don't personally have too much really to comment on this person's portfolio. I thought it would just be like a good counterpoint to me saying, because I mentioned like, I don't think the model portfolio is good enough anymore. And then I came across this and I was like, okay, this kind of acts, acts, this kind of adds a counterpoint where the model portfolio can be good enough, but you have to be this sort of quality. And I don't think most people hit this quality, especially as a student, I don't think. 
But if this guy could do this model quality and then texture on top, they would get a job instantly, 100%. This person could just walk into a studio. If they could texture this as well, they would be set for sure. What he's kind of lacking is just the standard sort of, the standard sort of VFX thing where you have your turntables and stuff like that. I know he has this turntable. I don't really think this is enough. I don't personally like seeing still frame turntables because it doesn't really, it doesn't look that professional, I don't think. Like the still frame turntable is what we usually do at the start of a project just so they can get the lighting setups done correctly. But there's no reason why you couldn't just have a full continuous turntable without like stepping frames, right? So yeah, what if I was him, what I would do? I would just, I don't even know if you need to keep the gun. I, but I, what I would do, 100%, I would take the Chappie model, I would finish Chappie, do, do the legs, do, you know, the arms, everything like that. I would fully finish Chappie to, to this sort of degree. And I would start presenting it better. Because everything he has is just screenshots, it's just not nice renders, right? Because it's very simple to go into any program now and render with the wireframe on top and it will come up better than this. So it's purely just presentation, right? Like his camera angles and stuff are all good. It's just, I'm not really a fan of just showing my uh, screenshots anymore for this sort of stuff. Just just render it, why not? Like he shows he can render, it's, it's here. I would rather see this with a nice, you know, wireframe shader rendered on top of it than just a Maya Play Blast. Yeah, he's, he's dealt with everything so well. Like everything is just nice, good quads. It, it's really, it's really well thought out. You can tell this person's an engineer for sure. Uh, yeah, it was very good, very, very good. I would, I would gladly work with this person. So what I would do is I would just hell go to this video and use this as like inspiration for like how to break, how to, you know, show off the Chappie model. Like I would start doing like proper turntables like this, I think. Even if he doesn't have the texture, if he has like a nice model transition like this with the turntable and stuff like that, I think this would be very nice. I think this is what he's kind of missing. He's just missing this nice sort of presentation. Because he has a good model, right? Might as well finish it. He doesn't necessarily have to do this unless he's rigged it himself. Like if he's, if he has rigged it like this, then that would be pretty epic. But I think just having like a, a full on breakdown of the Chappie model, I think itself would be good. That looks like a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work for sure. But it's, it's definitely will make you stand out. But yeah, I think, I think this guy is already hireable for sure. I just think he just needs to work on his presentation. That's it. Just finish the Chappie model, present it very well, and you can get yourself a job. You don't even need the gun. I mean, you can keep the gun if you want, but I would just present it a bit better um, and just focus more effort on the Chappie. And that's it. This dude can get a job for sure.